All right, tonight we want to do a class action suit for a, uh, a proactive class action suit, a interactive where everybody participates and we govern our, uh, uh, our, our new year. And I believe the new year is filled with things like what no eyes seen, ear heard, mind can see, those kind of things, and uh, boldly go where no man's gone if you want to use some, was that Star Trek or what that other one? Yeah. Uh, you know, stuff like that is just really fascinating to me. And, and we've got to, uh, got to step into some of the unknown things. And what I'm doing right now in my own life, I shared last Wednesday, is that I know that God is upgrading me and I know he's upgrading all of us. But I have to take a step of faith in activating some of that. Some of that's with financial things. Some of that's with with just standing in faith, walking in faith, governing righteously. Uh, and list can go on and on and on, but I have to change a lot about what I'm, the way I looked at things in the past, the way I spoke about things, the way I thought about things in the past, and I have to do things differently to upgrade my existence, my, my let's just say my divinity, so that I can more... Uh, uh, effectively step into the things that he's called me to do. And so I invited Timothy to come on and uh, uh, Donna and and the rest of you guys. So I want to make this interactive so we can do a class action suit. I want to hear from you guys too and build our case along the way. We can enter in the case as we speak if we want to or we can do a case at the end. So I kind of like to do them as we go, you know, just kind of really cool that... Uh, it doesn't have to be A, B, C, X, Y, Z, legalistic, follow the rules and the guidelines. It can just be following the Spirit. But we'll see how it goes and uh, where where the Spirit wants to take us. So, uh, Timothy, welcome back. Man, it's good to see you or see your name on the screen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. <laughs> he showed up. Yeah, yeah. What's going on with you for the new year? You know, I always didn't really like all the new year little rhymes they come up with. And, you know, they kind of get old after a while. And, you know, I, I like to uh, uh, step back from all that a little bit and just hear God for myself. And and rather than hang on the what the prophets are saying, I like to hear what Yahweh is saying to me and and, and, and speak through that to others. So. I, I keep thinking about the the seasons where I live and <clears throat> trying to adjust my spirit to what season I'm in. And, you know, the the idea of the new year in scripture, it's actually not uh, in January. It's in when harvest is beginning. And the, um, but I, I, I don't, you know, that doesn't bother me too much. I don't get carried off too much on that stuff. But the idea of January 1, I, I've always tried to set some time aside, uh, usually between Thanksgiving and uh, New Year's, just to kind of pray into what's coming up and what what adjustments do I need to make. And I always see this as a time to renew my covenant with God. Uh, to go get a checkup with the Holy Spirit, see if there's anything in me that he's not happy with and make some adjustments. But I feel like this year is a lot about shifting to the spirit. And that's why I think a class action regarding that topic is even starting out this conversation about healing. Because I think we've actually got a model for healing in scripture that we've not used very much. And that's what you guys were talking about where we, we engage with someone's spirit and bring them into unison with the spirit of God. <clears throat> and I think all healing is, should become subject to the presence of God, the same way demonic stuff is. You know? And I notice in scripture, sometimes Jesus casts something out. Sometimes he rebuked it. Sometimes he just said that person's healed. Um, it's hard to tell the difference occasionally in, in what he was doing when it's a spirit and when it's just physical. Um, but he addressed the weakness in multiple ways. And I just don't think there's a single, um, I, I don't think there's a single perfect plan to see healing in every case. I think God wanted us to depend on the Holy Spirit 
and to depend on uh, consulting with him about every matter. And because he doesn't want to give us something like a toy and let us go out and use it, we see we, we got this power tool we can wield and then leave him out of it. And uh, he wants to actively be involved in everything that we're doing. <laughs> and so I'm approaching the new year that way. I'm, one thing I've done is I've said to God, uh, just in a per very personal way, I, I don't want to make any more decisions that are contrary to your perfect will. Um, I don't want to have to renew covenant with you. I want to walk out a, a level of covenant that I've never known before. And part of my resolution this year, which I think is a good thing to do, was to, to give God permission to take me where I didn't know how to go. And by that, I simply mean that it's one thing to look back on my life and say, wow, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. I've, I've done a lot. And, and God's been good. At the same time, no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that he has prepared for us. So I'm like, how do we get to that? And um, so this year, I really resolved to say to God, uh, you've got my total cooperation and permission to take me where I don't even know how to ask to go. And I want to go into a level of the presence that I've never had before. I want to see God moving in a way that I that I don't even know how to pray for yet. If that makes sense. Um, and Terry, Terry and I were talking a while back. I don't. I think you remember this, Terry, but we were talking about a while back about a move of God. What does it look like? And and I think sometimes God actually answers our prayers and we don't see it because we're expecting it to happen a certain way or in a certain place. And I'm convinced that God always answers our prayers, but he doesn't always answer them exactly the way we wanted to apply them. <clears throat> and if we have eyes to see, then we get, we still get in on that. We still discover that. And we don't feel like we have just totally in the dark, but one thing that I would like to to say, and I, I don't I want us to go into the suit thing, but I had an encounter with, with Saul a while back. I call him Saul now because in this encounter up to that point, I've always called him Paul. And uh, my whole life, I've always, he's always been one of my favorite characters in scripture. So I just, I preached Paul. I called, I talked to Jesus about Paul. I, I was thankful for the word of God that he wrote. And yet in this encounter, Jesus called him Saul. And I, I said, Jesus, I, I always call him Paul. Is, is that offensive to him? And he's like, no, it's okay. But Paul was his Roman name. And Saul was his um, birth name. You know? So from a covenant perspective, he was Saul. Okay. And he was zealous for the law. He was zealous for what he thought was the right thing to do. And it led him to actually go after people and, and, and bring, you know, I mean, he ordered the deaths of some people and his repentance later was because of his conversion and believing in Jesus. But when Jesus appears to him, Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you kicking against the bricks? And it looks like in scripture, the only time that, he used his name Paul is when he was exercising his Roman citizenship rights. When he was just talking covenant with the body of Christ, I think he was known as Saul. And I think for a while he didn't want to be known as Saul because he was Saul the murderer. He was Saul the guy that was trying to kill all the Christians. And I think he tried to run from that name for a while. Plus, we have Saul in scripture that was a king that didn't do everything correctly either. And so I, I think one of the, the problems that we have with covenant things is sometimes we don't like who we were created to be. We'd rather be somebody else. And the world would like to put a different name on us, a different function on us. You know? But I had this in this encounter with, with Saul. Um, I saw his meeting with Timothy. Um, I, I, I lived out the moment in time. I went back in time. I lived out when he met Timothy and, and was in uh, the household that, that Timothy was a part of. <laughs> and Timothy wanted to be a priest. 
and his whole life, his mother and his grandmother loved him immensely and taught him the scriptures and did everything that they knew to do uh, for him well, but they had one flaw. They had a very limited understanding of the grace of God. And so they only put into Timothy what they understood from the scriptures, and they didn't know how to prepare him to be who he really was. What they did was good, but they gave him one flaw. They remind him repeatedly that his daddy was a Greek. And think about what it would be like growing up in a Jewish household if you, if you want to be a priest, if your whole life from a little baby you want to be a priest, and over and over, your mother and your grandmother tell you that you're never going to be a priest because your daddy's a Greek. And the Jews won't let you become a priest. And in this encounter, when Saul came into their house, he listened to that young man say, when I grow up, I want to be a priest. But my mama and my grandmother always tell me I can't do that. And Saul just exploded in his spirit with love for him and said to him, we're not under the order of Aaron anymore or Levi were under the order of Melchizedek now, and you are going to be a priest. Yeah. But then to solidify that word to him, which we don't see this, what I'm describing is not directly in scripture. You can read between a lot of the things that he said to Timothy and you can see his heart for him. But um, later I saw him go into his room to sleep and go into the spirit. And he picked up Timothy's human spirit and carried it into the heavenly realms and set that young man on Jesus's lap. Mm -hmm. And that encounter transformed my thinking phenomenally and how we should pray for somebody else. You know, that it's, it's okay to pray for them where they can hear you. It's okay to pray whatever comes out of your heart and it's a spontaneous thing going on. But if we're really going to live prayer, then I've got to, to go into the spirit with my prayer. And if I'm going to pray for somebody else, I need to bring them into the spirit also. And so that startled me that he did that so naturally. So I turned to Jesus in this encounter and I said, Jesus, can I do that for other people? And the Lord said to me, you've actually been doing that for a long time. You just don't know it. You usually do it well when you're asleep. <laughs> and uh, you're not you're not doing that as well consciously because you don't know the benefits of of dealing with the spirit so you try to fix what you understand and um, and then the lord said to me that that the more you love somebody the more powerful you you are enabled in, in grace linda i can hear you um, but the more the more you love somebody, the more you're empowered by the Spirit of God to bring them into the presence. If I, if I don't love them, I could go into the presence and leave them out. But if I love them, I'm carrying them in there also. So anyway, I, I watched Paul, Saul, um, pick up Timothy like a father would a child and carry him into the throne room of God and bring him up to the throne and set him on Jesus's lap. And then I heard, I saw Jesus stand up on his throne and, and call Timothy out by name, declare in the heavens in front of all the angels what he had created Timothy for. And then he took Timothy into father's cloud and set him on father's lap. Yeah. And in that encounter, the then father spoke to Timothy and he awakened his human spirit. In scripture, it uses the word quicken, that he has quickened my mortal spirit. That literally means to shock it back into life. Yeah. So the presence of God is designed to wake up our spirit and make us fully activated in the design that God gave. Yeah. Now, using that as a prayer model, I simply asked Jesus that I said, I know this is what you do. I don't know how to do it, but I, I just witnessed it, but help me do that more. And this is a lot of what gets prayers answered. I, I think when you describe the blue light, it's just another way of putting into descriptive language 
what may be visible when the spirit of God, when the presence of God actually comes into the room. But I think even if we don't see that on the earth, I can still pick up someone and take them into the heavenly realms. And what's fascinating, though, is if I do that and they're not conscious of it, I'm just interceding for them. I'm getting them in front of the face. That's amazing and wonderful and incredible. But it's actually better if I can bring the presence of God into the earth and as it is above, so it is below. So uh, when we see the light of God or the or the the blue haze, uh, I call it. It's it's like a fog. Sometimes it it almost is like a shimmering, glistening blue, and it looks like a fog sometimes. But when I've seen that, that's the glory of God on the earth. And if we see it on the earth, it's also engaging in the throne room of heaven. You know? So it's it, that spot then becomes like a portal for whatever's going on in the heavenly realms can actually invade the earth also. Irregardless, I think we can step up healing. I think we can uh, cause massive changes. I think we can make the word of God uh, come alive in somebody. And so I, I think we should practice this much, much more. Um, from a court case perspective then, um, I think that's what a good attorney does in court is he intercedes for you. He presents your case. He does it in a very legal, systematic way. But we have something even better than that in the court of heaven because I can take you into the, into the case. I can take you into the word of God. I can pick you up and carry you as well as your issue before the, the judge of the heavens and the earth and ask him to make a decision. And when he makes a decision, it's not just a vocal decision, but he inhabits his words. So he fills your spirit the same time he says yes or amen to whatever your petition is. You know? And that's actually more beneficial sometimes than just the answer that I needed, because I get a permanent change. I don't just get a petition response, but I become more like him in the process also. And I think that's why then the, the decision that I can now incorporate in my life, it, it gains evidence, it changes things on the earth. And if I receive it as an impartation and not just a decision from the judge, then it becomes impartable to others. And I think this is also why I can then turn it into a class action and I can say, do for everyone else that needs it what you just did for me. Mm. And I release that grace into the earth. Um, one example I'd like to bring out that I was meditating on in January, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop with this. I was looking at King David when he had to deal with what I think is probably in Scripture, his first um, spiritual court case where he gets a plague that breaks out right after he becomes king. And he goes and petitions the Lord and inquires of the Lord why this is happening. That's an interesting response to sickness because he doesn't just immediately, you know, groan and travail for God to heal his friends. Instead, he goes to the Lord and says, why is this sickness releasing upon the people? And God's answer is it's because of what King Saul did to the Gibeonites when he broke covenant with the Gibeonites. Now, that's a real problem because Saul's already dead and he can't fix it. So David basically inquires of the Lord, which is a court case, like, what do I do about it? You know, is there anything that can be done? And God tells him, purchase this spot on the earth from Aaron, the Jebusite, and build me an altar there. Now, that's a really strange response to, I need a healing, you know, or I need a healing for my friends and my family. He has to go negotiate a real estate transaction, and he has to physically build an altar to the Lord, and then the sword of the Lord stops. Mm -hmm. And he looks at that spot, he says, surely this is the house of God, and I knew it not. So he just buys a spot on the earth and he realizes this is the house of God. 
It's not a building. It's not a church. It's not a temple. It's a threshing floor. So why he calls it a church, I believe, is because the presence of God was there. And my, my definition of the body of Christ or the ecclesia of God now has changed because I now use that as my definition that no Jesus, no church. If we don't have the presence of God, then I don't have a right to call it a church. It's a gathering. It may be gathering in his name and we're, we're supposed to be uh, stewarding over the presence, but I, I need to be careful how I try to sell it to others if I don't have a manifest presence of God in it. I'm not saying that to correct anything. I'm just saying that he had a revelation that this was the house of God because he had a face-to-face -face with God at that spot. But looking at that as a court case, uh, he went into a healing prayer with instructions for litigating a problem instead of just asking for healing. And when he fixed the problem with God, and God knew that once he had done that level of obedience, he was going to carry out everything else that God said he required for that problem to be fixed. And so he did. So he stops the plague. Now, here's what's important about it. God said to me, I want you to understand this court case, because when David did that, this was Jesus's words. He said, when, when David did that as a man after my own heart, he said, you're wondering why he had to deal with that problem because he didn't, he's not the one that did the, the, the damage. He's not the one that broke the covenant. He said, I waited until I had David on the throne to release the judgment for the broken covenant with the Gibeonites because if I had released it in Saul's day, Israel wouldn't exist. He wouldn't have repented. So I waited till I had someone with my heart. I released the judgment with someone in place that would respond to me like I required. And that fixed the problem. But what I really want you to know is not just David's extraordinary heart in this, but I want you to understand that when David did what I said, I didn't just heal the people that were sick. I removed that sickness from the face of the earth and it has never touched the earth again. And he said, that's how I want you to start dealing with healing for my body. It's, 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 we've, we've gone enough. We've had enough of this where we just pray for a person and they get healed and then millions of others that have the same problem die. I really believe we're, we're at a place where God wants the body to come into a spot with him in the presence, and he wants to give us instructions that will remove um, iniquity and sicknesses from the face of the earth. Yeah. And that sickness, if we do this correctly, will not be allowed to touch another living human being again. Yeah. Uh, I think God has that power. Jesus has been given that power and authority, so why would he want to just heal you in a very limited level and not remove the roots of that sickness? Hmm. Knowing that it'll damage somebody else that might not know how to pray. So I think God as a judge wants to make these decisions on that level that I just described. And we need to learn how to present that case correctly. So anyway, I'll toss it back. That's all I got for now. Yeah, that's so good, uh, Timothy. Uh, I was reminded of something the Lord asked me to do uh, a couple of years ago, and I've failed miserably in this. And He said, Terry, I want you to, to, to make a heavenly trade with me. He said, I want you to trade with me every time you operated and did anything under my good and my pleasing will and trade that for my perfect will. And I go... You know, I know one of my moves to Destin was, was his goodwill. He allowed it, but there was no grace and no favor on it whatsoever. And so I moved up to Nashville. And that was following a dream and some words that came forth. And there was tremendous favor on me in Nashville. And connections were, were off the chain. But uh, I think that's, a, that's one thing we miss a lot. We kind of lump good, pleasing, and perfect will all into the same thing. And so it's part of moving forward is we need to move in his perfect will. And that comes with inquiring of the Lord. That comes with spending time with him, knowing him, 
uh, at a at a greater level. And the second thing I, I felt like, uh, Donna, I want you to uh, share here in a minute if you have something. I believe you probably do. <laughs> You're always loaded. But uh, you were talking about Saul's and Paul's, or Saul, or Paul's family. And all I could hear in that was the religious uh, upbringing, the religious spirit uh, coming against who we really, who he really was. Right. And secondly, I, I believe that is something, well, Don and I dealt with that up at a conference in, in North Carolina, along with Dr. Ron Horner. And I believe we have to very carefully uh, uh, sit with the Lord, uh, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me in the courts of heaven. Know, see if there's any wicked way in me. And Holy Spirit began to lead me for uh, to discover where the spirit of religion is in me. And I'll tell you what, I've mentioned it a few times. Every time I've done that, I've found the spirit of religion in me. He said, I don't want you to point fingers at anybody. I want you to clean up <laughs> what's going on in you, the wicked way in me. And Holy Spirit, it's been less and less in uh, the past year or two, but, but it was quite frequently, Holy Spirit, you need to look inside. You need to look inside. And every single time, it is so deceptive, so sneaky, that it'll sneak in on a, out on thought, on a word that comes out of your mouth, on an action, of something in your heart. It just is so sneaky, and it comes in with pride and arrogance and can go really off, off on a wild, crazy flight to somewhere. Uh, so that's the two things I got, uh, perfect will and uh, deal with the religious spirit in us. And I also say, like the, the uh, one more thing, the uh, the levels that we're talking about is, you mentioned it that that there's we want help for ourselves and rightly so we get it, uh, uh, but we're moving to to a place beyond just dealing with ourselves like a class action suit, uh, where we're 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 beginning to move beyond our own individual needs to family needs to to a city to a state and the nations and the all creation and so once we we uh, uh you know it's almost like uh, uh again the scripture says we're, our spiritual senses are exercised by reason to use he'll expand our tent pegs further and further to give us more and more authority where he can entrust us with governing righteously in his stead and so we move forward in that and uh you know just some things i want to share as as timothy was talking so i really appreciate that timothy that's awesome awesome things to look at and so donna what's uh what's going on with you i want to give everybody a chance too here to to share what they they're sensing i'm, I'm writing stuff down i hope you are too <laughs> thanks terry well every time i hear timothy uh speak he challenges me and God uses him to stretch my thinking and to, um, you know, I, the thoughts and things that have been rolling around in my mind about healing and praying for people to be healed and all that. And then Timothy goes off and says, we need to pray so that that sickness is never again on the earth. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've been like this and I need to be like this. <laughs> me, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for nothing, Timothy. <laughs> no, it's good to be stretched and, and challenged and um, appreciate hearing your stories and your intimate walk with Jesus. Thank you for sharing that. It means a lot to hear that. Um, yeah, I... Um, I had a dream last night and the topic of the dream was salt. I've never, I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever, ever had a dream with salt in it. And I don't remember the dream very much, except that I was with people and we were either trading in salt or we were building a place for salt, or we were looking for salt to be collected into a warehouse, something like that. And salt being that, you know, this we are to be the salt and light of the earth. And so I thought that was an interesting dream. One of those dreams you wake up and you're like, oh boy, I think this is supposed to challenge me. I'm pretty sure my father in heaven is challenging me. 
and laying down the gauntlet kind of thing saying, are you coming? Are you coming? Are you really wanting to say what you say you want to do? And that's, uh, I think, an, a timed response to something that I did about a week and a half ago regarding the year of 2023. And like you guys, probably you're sitting with the Lord and you're thinking, well, I need to check in with the Lord. I need to have Holy Spirit show me if there's anything in me that's not pleasing to the Lord. You're you're in the process of doing that. You're peeling away your, the walls from your heart. You're getting as, as gut honest with the Lord. And as I did that, I hear the Lord say to me, you know, you could go to heaven you could come to the courts and you could deed your year to me and I was like oh yes that's what I want to do that's exactly what I want to do Lord so I um I had put my new 2023 calendar on the wall and it sits in a place where I can see it when I'm praying and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, when I pinned that to the wall, I was pinning up all my dreams for 2023, but I've got to check in and find out what my savior's dream for this year for me are. And he said to me, I appreciate your dreams. So he was making space for my dreams. But he said, if you'll deed your year to me, I'll sign off on the bottom. And when I put my name on it, I put my dreams in so that they're co-mingled with yours. And the, it just was a really touching moment for me. So I sat down. I didn't know how to do that. I sat down with the Lord and said, okay, well, well what do I do? Holy Spirit, how do I uh, achieve this? And you guys have done court cases and you probably are this, the same way I am, where you may not know where to begin or what the... Um, what particular court you're going to or the stance you're going to take. But if you'll sit and just be quiet and still, the, the Holy Spirit begins to lead you. And I had two or three really significant things. I had some language that the Lord gave me to use. Um, at the very end, I saw a, a, a scroll that he put his name on, Jesus put his name on. And I thought I was done until at the very end, he said, would you, how did he say it? He said, um, now, uh, I knew I had a knowing that I needed to get up right then and take communion because this was a very big act of my entire year. And I was doing this deeding in the courts, but I wanted to seal it in this realm. And I wanted to take communion and sit at his table. And when I did that, at that point, he said, he slid the document back over to me and he goes, I want you to hide this in your heart. He's like, it's documented in heaven, but I want this to be in your heart too. That everything that happens to you this year, I've signed off on. And it gave me pause. Whoa, what is in my year? You know, <laughs> but I was like, okay, then, then there's a covenant relationship I have with every single thing that's going to happen. And already, you know, I've had some good things and some bad things uh, happen. And I'm just like, okay, this is all going to have the name of the Lord on it because I took that action. And I believe when you do a thing in the courts of heaven, it's very real. It's very important. And all types of spiritual beings know it. So there's my two cents. I hope that helps somebody. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I just looked up a covenant assault and uh, it's talking about a uh, uh, most likely means a covenant is a perpetual covenant because the use of salt is a preservative. Yep. And so, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. It, ahead, it can mean light, truth, and influence. Okay. Hey, Donna. Nice. Um, I think this is for you because out of the blue, my daughter asked me, hey, mom, can salt burn? So she actually looked that up like today. We, we weren't even talking about salt. And she just, that thought came to her and we looked it up. Mm -hmm. And can you believe it? Salt does not burn. It cannot be burned. It 
Um, here, I just looked it up again. Salt is a good means to control suppressed flames and flare-ups without having a cooling effect on the coals. That's so, so fascinating. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. Can salt be burned? No, how interesting. Mm -hmm. huh, that puts a whole flavor on that, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, makes you go, oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Anybody else have anything to like to share? If not, we'll just jump into doing what we're going to do. I like the deed. The deed. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, can I say something? Yes. Okay, just kind of different. But the other day, the Lord told me, I wasn't even reading the scripture, but he said to me, Pamela, he says, faith is a substance. Step into it. It's like, oh, okay, Lord. So by faith, I'm stepping into faith, the substance of faith. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's crazy how he does these things because we really don't get to see what's going on and, and and how it works yet, right? But yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, actually, there's a couple of scriptures I didn't look. I don't. Uh, uh, I know where they are, but I'm not going to look them up. But talk about your faith is evidence in the courts. All right, so Hebrews eleven one through three. By mm -hmm. faith, you're. Well, let me go there. I, that's. I forgot which one it was. I can find it real quick. <clears throat> so your faith is actually, let's see, Hebrews 11. Let me just take a minute. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So it's a tangible substance or it's a reality that's already existing. For by it, what? By faith. Uh, the elders obtained a good testimony. It didn't say they obtained a good testimony. It said their faith obtained a good testimony. So you got to think, like, is faith a living substance, a living being, a living thing that, that presents evidence on your behalf in the courts of heaven? Yeah, I think so. Different little thinking. It's theory, but it's... it's uh, Something to think about because of Hebrews eleven two by faith, uh, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Where in the courts? Well, so, thank you for saying that because that makes me have a little more understanding on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. That's good. I, I I teach that in the in the courts of heaven intensive mm -hmm. too. That's in there somewhere. Anybody else have something they'd like to share? Oh, Sharon, I believe you need to unmute yourself. Well, with my healing, it was just fact that I believe because when I got that paper that said I had stage four liver cancer, cancer of the spleen, and cancer of the spine, and I talked with Hector, and basically we just, he just said, you know, it bows to the truth that you were healed before the foundation of the world. And so when I and had faith up God, when I said, I believe that, I am at that instant lost seven incurable illnesses. And then God showed me that the healing was on the inside because I just believed and I hadn't heard about the courts of heaven then. So. Amen. Well, you have to wonder, it's like, you know, none of the disciples were the two yeah. that Jesus said had great faith. <laughs> they were, there was two people in the Bible in the New Testament that had great faith and it wasn't any one of the, the ones that were following him. And so yeah. you have to wonder if I stand before the Lord on search me, O God type thing, is he going to say, oh, ye of little faith? I'm going to say, heck No. I'm going to stand in faith because as faith believes in, in, and sees the tangible reality because it's substance of things hoped for, I'm not going to be operating in hope. I'm going to be standing in faith as if uh, it's already existing and by my governmental voice it becomes a, 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 a declaration, a governmental decree that releases the tangible reality in, in, from the unseen to the seen realm. 
And so that's another thing. I'm just going to write that down because we need to move in greater levels of, of faith to take us where we need to go. So thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody? Yeah, anybody else have something? If not, we'll just jump right in. You guys good? Well, anybody want to open up our court case with uh, Donna? You're just really amazing at that. You, you want to start this thing off, then we'll just jump in. If not, we'll do it. I'll be happy to jump us in. I like okay, it. cool. Yeah. I'll just remind everyone here that you have been created a new creation in Christ Jesus, and therefore you are a portal of heavenly places. And you can ascend through that portal by your spirit to, to the places that you need to go in the spirit that you want to go. That was Jesus opening the way for us. So. Jesus, we just focus on you, the perfect one, and we ascend in your name, entering through you, by you, and in you. We glorify your name, Father, and we thank you that you have exalted Jesus to the right hand. Jesus, we thank you that by covenant blood, you have invited us as a covenant partner through your own blood to access what we need to access and have given us the right to be here. So we thank you for that. We exalt your name. You are the beautiful one. You are the beloved. We come into alignment and agreement with the spirit of truth on these things. Mm. Father, we just honor you as our righteous judge, Yeshua as our attorney advocate, and Holy Spirit as our legal counselor and helper. We bless you and honor you. We come into the courts through the blood of Jesus, through the cross, and we thank you. We call forth the cloud of witnesses, the angels, Father, all creation, and begin to testify on our behalf that we are petitioning you for and setting the pace and ordering and establishing the kingdom of God in our life for this year and beyond. Father, we thank you for all those in attendance here today, not only the ones on Zoom, we bless those here on Zoom, but the ones who will be watching, the ones who will be picking up this in faith and moving forward uh, by faith into their, their uh, new, uh, into the unknown. Uh, what no eye has seen, ear heard, or mind conceived. Father, we bless you for your word. Your Father, your word is the absolute truth. And we, above all things, we stand on your word. Father, I want to repent on behalf of... Uh, of all of us here in our generational bloodline iniquities for for operating knowingly or unknowingly under a religious spirit father we break the chains of bondages in our hearts our minds our our soul in our bodies we thank you that that uh, once we return and we change our mind, we change and return to our primordial first estate. Father, we'll be restored uh, back to your original intent and design. Father, we thank you for that, the power of repentance. Father, we, we uh, 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 return from a religious spirit, one that has been built around uh, my own agenda, my own thoughts, the way I was brought up, the way I was taught. And Father, that uh, those things that that were based in a religious a religious uh, system and agenda father we repent and ask you not only forgive me but forgive those as well and father set our uh, the captives free father in jesus name we thank you amen
I just jump in whenever you you feel you have something. Father, we also stand before your throne of grace to repent for where we have allowed a religious spirit to divide us as humans created in your image. But Father, also the religious spirit has divided our love from our fellow man. And by listening to a, a lesser God, we've fallen into the trap of thinking we have the right to judge by that lesser God's lies. And we repent for those things. Um, we repent for where the religious spirit has divided your church, Jesus. We repent for where the religious spirit has divided families. Father, we repent for where we have hurt others because we've been answering or listening to a religious spirit or we've emotionally wounded them or distanced ourselves. We repent for that identificationally for ourselves and our bloodline, as well as for those who would hear this class action suit and desire to enter in. Father, I want to repent on behalf of our thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to have been thinking about ourselves. Because when we get a revelation from you and then others don't have it, we we uh, we subtle it's subtle how we judge and we and, and we're critical of other people and, and it's like we we do think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. And I and I want to repent on behalf of the body of Christ and myself for that, Lord. Amen. Man. I just keep hearing the invitation to say, come, come, all who are heavily laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. And many times, Father, we've come, but are just on our own, but not caring about the others who are also burdened and heavily laden to find the rest that's in you. So, Father, tonight, we just say thank you, Father, that there is a rest and a yoke and a, that the burdens may be lifted from so many in and around us, Father, in Jesus' name. All right, what are you guys seeing in the spirit right now? Where are we in the court process? What are you sensing? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Maybe there would be a smell, maybe colors, lights, sounds, angels, cloud of witnesses showing up, just stretch your faith a little bit into some places you've never been before and you're probably not going to be wrong but uh one thing about going to a place you've never been you have to take a risk once in a while what are you seeing A recurring thought, a recurring vision, flash vision just happened, right? Mm -hmm. I'm smelling wood. Well, I'm smelling this beautiful fragrance of wood. It's like a really large, beautiful, stately room. There are a lot of people there. But the fra it's a fragrance of wood. It's really beautiful. Okay, dive a little deeper into that. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Go deeper. Come on. Mm. Are we taking this to the cross? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> We're taking in there. The cross, blood of the lamb. And also, it's the, his virtues. Um, looking at the virtues of Christ, all of his names that we have been distracted by so many things other than looking at who he is and having a personal deep relationship with his virtues, then whatever the need is and what we're 
asked to do, then we can go with him with that virtue and it can be accomplished. Is there any further repentance in there that you're sensing? Yes, repenting for not, not looking at Jesus in all of the circumstances, all of the situations, and instead we're looking, we repent for looking at other places, we're looking at other faces, we're looking at other people, we're looking at other opinions, we're not taking it to Jesus and say, Jesus, what virtue of yours do I need to have in this situation? What how do I need to move to bring about your presence, to bring about what it is that you want to accomplish in this specific circumstance? Instead of looking at what is going on in the earth, we need to look at it from the virtue of Christ. He has so many, and I just repent that I do not know all of them. I do not know, I do not know all of the virtues uh, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we just corporately repent for not knowing you out of an intimate personal relationship. Father, I repent for my generations all the way back to Adam, all the way back to where that sin and iniquity entered into my generational bloodline. Father, we just repent of that in Jesus' name. Anybody else have visions? I had something uh, come forward as evidence in my mind's eye. I saw this beautiful golden medallion uh, coming forward, being presented to each one of us um, in this new year. And and the more I looked at it, the more intricate it was. It had many like carvings of flowers and fruit and all kinds of, it was just beautiful. So I kept saying, Lord, this is beautiful. What is this? And I felt like he was saying, um, this is beauty for ashes. And so then as I asked him to show me more, three uh, cups came forward out of the medallion. And it was um, the cups of fellowship with Father, Son, and Spirit. And so, um, and so then I was like, okay, so this is the Father saying any... Uh, situation where there were ashes, anything that was burned to the ground, anything where someone died, any, any relationship uh, was lost, anybody perished, any, any dream died, anything was unfulfilled or uh, in, our, uh, in a sense lost that he's saying, um, because there was a sense that I'm, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy to receive this. And so he was like, well, I this is what you're you're gaining. You're it's a it's a medallion of reclaiming, it's a medallion of redemption. I paid the price, so I I pray a prayer of repentance, in in the the fact that um, the Father is redeeming out of every situation, um, good, bad, or ugly that he's he's bringing forth redemption, and um, and Father, forgive us, forgive me, for I where I don't feel worthy to receive it or whether I didn't want to let the old uh, ashes go and receive the new crown, the new medallion. Um, but there's a fellowship, there's a cup of fellowship with each of Father, Son, and Spirit that we receive. And we just um, turn away from the um, rolling in the ashes. We turn away from the sorrow and sadness, and we receive this beauty for ashes medallion that you're giving us now. Amen. All right, who's next? Anybody get any strong concordance numbers? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> I think what I'm what I'm going through is the it's okay, let me see if I can put it into words. There's been a a, a heavy trauma in my life back in August that hit me in every area. And since uh I've the Lord has blessed me to overcome a lot of things in my whole life to where I walk in holiness and purity. But I've, I think I've gotten to that point of where I'm like, I've done enough and I can't go on anymore. But even in his faithfulness and goodness, it's gotten me um, like my attitude has been like, I can't, 
I can't fight anymore. I'm tired, so I'm stepping back. And so that, I don't know how to put that in words, but I want to repent of that and jump over that hurdle. There so you go. that, yes. Yeah, however it comes out of your heart, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amen. Thank I you. I guess from Louisiana, I don't I want to repent of crawfishing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh I looked up uh Strongs and Corns, I saw number forty six forty six, and it means a breathing out mm. in the Hebrew. And mm -hmm. in the Greek, it means curved, winding, or crooked, breathing mm -hmm. out the old and breathing in the new, breathing the breath of Yahweh into yeah. our reality. Mm -hmm. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Mm -hmm. Come on, breathing out. It's like, there's a little training here. When I get a, con a concordance number, it just comes as a flash number. And I first got 46, and I was looking, what's the rest of it? 46. 46, 46. Okay. That took about two seconds. And my mind would go, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. But now incorporate, it does have meaning, Begin to examine that when you see a vision, hear a thought, have a smell, and you'll come into a place of your spiritual senses are exercised by reason of use. The more you do that, the more you can begin to, to see and perceive in the spirit. Not just strong and cordis numbers, but whatever we're looking for, angels, cloud of witnesses. So let's dive in a little deeper and find out what you're, what you're seeing, what you're sensing. Don't be afraid to... to to uh to be wrong because you're probably not going to be wrong god's not going to do that <laughs> unless he wants you to learn something then <laughs> i think i have something that goes with what lauren was expressing and what you expressed about the breathing in and breathing out of yahweh and some of what john said too um so i i saw a door and I felt like the Lord said, there are some who cannot embrace 2023 as you're trying to embrace 2023 here together, <clears throat> pardon me, because you have not let go of all the pain that you suffered and the trauma from 2022. Mm. And so let's just spend some time on that and just lay your burden about 2022 because there was some stuff in 2022 there was some good stuff but there was some stuff and so if that's you lay just lay that down lord we just right now thank you for this opportunity we ask angels to come into the court where we're standing we're going to lay we're going to lay these down there's angels standing around us asking us to remove the garment of yeah. 2022 yes and hand it to those angels for disposal or i think they're just going to mm -hmm. go pack it away right <laughs> but lord that's just so beautiful that you would invite us to take off the garment of 2022 so we can receive the garment called 2023 mm -hmm. and all of the emotions that that goes with all the neuro patterns in our brain that 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 goes with that we uh, unburden ourselves of that. We lay it before your throne, before your love, before your mercy and your care. All of our fears from 2022, we don't want to wear that into 2023. Yes. Man, all those, um, those moments where we felt alone, which is a lie. We, <laughs> We don't want to wear those lies into 2023. So we give that to you as a garment as well. Amen. Maybe something's coming up for you all that you might want to contribute as something that was 
the need of laying it down so you don't walk into 2023 with it. Man. I just want to lay down the fear of trauma, another trauma. It seems like for each year of 2020, there's been a major traumatic thing with my health. I mean, major knock me completely out of the ball game. And I just decree and declare that this trauma, this trauma is broken now. I'm not taking trauma and fear into 2023. It's, it's over. It's over. It's over. And we testify with you, Pamela, and we, we testify of your desire not to enter into 2023 expecting to be traumatized. Amen. I agree with that. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. But trauma is also a, a presence, a being, a spirit that, that seems to cling on sometimes after you've gone through something, it's going to come like revisit like a familiar, right? So as I see it, we forbid it in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name we forbid of forbid it from coming again Thank in the you. name of Jesus. Right. Thank and you. as we're standing in the court, we typically don't, you know, make those types of statements in a courtroom setting necessarily. But I think what I see you agreeing with Pamela is or Pam that you're 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 grasping hold of of her further um like the way to maybe after this court case to hand that further to the Lord is to mm. take off that garment, hand it to that angel, tell the angel, I'm not wearing that anymore. And then mm. to my way of thinking, or at least what I do is then after I've made my court case before the Lord and the testimony of the court, the court has my testimony about a thing. It has what I have declared in two places, heaven and on earth. Then afterwards, I have received a verdict of righteousness through his blood. Then after that, I, I do the further work and I tell that trauma spirit, you have no more right to torment me. Get out in Jesus name and don't come back. Amen. Okay. In the name Thank of you Jesus. for that clarification, Donna. Thank you. Yes. yes. And, and I, I, I just recognize that uh, some of these things for me are habits that I've picked up I, and, and my thought to go in and to govern, which I know is my rightful place, I haven't been able to govern myself. And so uh, there's, I want to repent of some habits that I, I've, I've gained 40 pounds <laughs> and I want to repent of these habits from those traumas that anything that extends itself as an arm from that trauma, it has to be cut off right now. And I don't want to take that into 2023. Yeah. And I, I want to govern myself and break these things so that I can be strengthened so that I could go out in full force like I'm supposed to and govern this land mm -hmm. that I walk my feet on. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that if I can't govern what's going on with me so I want to cut all that off I want to get out of Lauren and into what I saw in that vision with me and Jesus so I do that too I repent of that yeah amen amen yeah Thank I want to repent of, of words like um, that keep me from because it's like well I've only been walking this less than a year and just learning this I think the fact that I think of it as being new limits me so I need to repent yeah amen thank you thank you well I want to repent of all uh, selfish agendas uh, Victoria anyway. wanted to say something there Terry too okay go ahead Victoria yes I want to lay down because while well, before the breath of God I was coughing very hard. Something was itching. And I was asking, what, what is it? Uh, so I want to lay down um, my own garment of complaining about moments when we're doing his will, but then we don't like it. So I want to lay down that because um, it's not my will, it's his will. So sometimes we don't understand things, but 
um, I just want to lay down that to you, Lord, that uh, repent for not knowing your ways, but I want to do your ways. So I want to have a new garment of praises always to you and doing things with love, unconditional love and um, accepting what it is that I need to do because walking your perfect will, I know that is the best things to do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Any angels showing up yet? Anybody see any angels? Cloud of witnesses? Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> I'm, I just back on the religious spirit. I just wanted to share something I felt I saw or was hearing the Lord say. Sorry. He was showing me that from the intent of our heart through the religious spirit that it put a, a binding on people's eyes or like a blindfold and it sent them into a wilderness spiritually where they didn't feel that they measured up or that they weren't worthy. So I just wanted to repent on the behalf of my generations and the religious spirit that I was raised under. That put that on people. And I just called them back to the Father. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Father, we agree with Lisa in the Quran yeah. to yeah. offer our testimony of repentance because it's true, Papa, that when we've operated in under veils of deception, whether in our past or in our present, in agreement with the religious spirit. It is a binding source to the spirits of humans and the souls of humans. And Father, we repent where we have been in agreement and allowed ourselves to be used by that spirit so that it sent our other fellow humans into the wilderness. We repent. We call it what you call it, Papa. It's not love. And it's sin. And we ask for forgiveness for ourselves, our bloodlines, in Jesus' name. I'm seeing this, um, that blue glory cloud is, in the water and the water looks kind of like the blue lagoon over in iceland uh, i think it's the river that's coming out of the throne but it looks like going down into like i need to go in immersed in the glory and part of the i'm seeing it's swirling in the water is thanksgiving being thankful for all things and even looking at trauma and stuff and mistakes of the past is one thing to let it go. It's another to say, I'm, I'm thankful for God's grace and glory. Um, I'm thankful for something I'm going through, even though I don't understand it, because it's helping me gain something that God wants. And I think um, often we're praying for release of stuff before we get to a place of ecstatic joy in the presence, even with it. And um, I think part of our testimony in the court is when I'm rejoicing in God's presence and he sees something broken, he fixes it. But if I just continuously come in asking him to fix what's broken, and then as soon as that's done, I leave, 
that that deprives him of the fellowship and the, the grace that he wants from us. Um, so I, I just I think we need to step into that pool of glory and just each of us in our own way just voice something that says I'm so grateful and thankful for God just 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 because he knows me and he's got me right where he wants me and and then I can come out of that with the glory and leave everything else in there and it's like wash it off and it's one thing to repent it's another to just be totally cleansed from it you know I don't want any residue of the past I don't want any residue of what was painful in 2022 I don't want any religious residue on me I I want to to be immersed in the glory and then come out with the newness of of Christ so if you hadn't done that let's just step in by faith right now it's like we're holding hands just all jumping in that pool at, at the same time don't worry about breathing because you can breathe in this light water thing. It's called the glory of God. <sighs> it's the salt pool also. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's blue salt water. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> yes, I see the the a like a, the blue but with uh the light ray, gold rays of the sunlight of god like shining through it mm -hmm. it's fun it's happy it's clean it's freedom it's mm -hmm. loving just continue to breathe deep breaths in and out There's laughter in this group as well. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting that too. I'm hearing frolic in the glory. It's like, <laughs> like we yeah. tend to not rejoice until we get what we're petitioning for, and it's like there's this place where God just wants us to, to, to let it go and rejoice anyway. But frolic in the glory. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Jen. Wow! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been watching these deep divers on YouTube that go down, they're setting diving records like 120 meters and they're going down in total darkness. It's like, let's just go deeper. <laughs> I don't know why those videos just pop up on my YouTube feed, but I'm seeing them every day and I'm fascinated by how these guys can hold their breath for six minutes and dive that deep without any, on one breath and it takes five, six minutes to do it. They're sending the fish back to you. Yeah, yeah. So let's go deeper into the darkness. I love what Ian Clayton says. Uh, when we don't see anything, we, it's dark, and you know, it's it's. Uh, but it's a gateway to the mysteries of God. So all we have to go is deeper into Him, into the darkness. What no eye has seen, ear heard, or might conceive. Uh, I believe this. 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 This this lake this this glory uh pool is is bearing testimony in the courts that saying yes come it's almost like come up here but it's go go down it's a dissension <laughs> and then it's an ascension in the other other end of it so let's just go deeper and deeper and deeper I really appreciate this experience with the Lord because you guys, I keep hearing the, the spirit of the Lord say <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't know if this is going to come across right or wrong, but he's like, 
2023 is not 2022. And it, it, maybe that's just for all of us. I bless you with that truth. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. You are healed already. You're already prospering. You're already a son of Yahweh. You're already a king and a priest. You already, as he is, so am I in this world. It's by faith, Father. This faith just getting stronger and stronger the deeper I go in this in this pool. Where I let go of everything. And I surrender and I yield everything about me as I descend in, into him in the depths of his heart. So there's a glory company of hosts that are singing in that blue cloud, in that glory cloud. And so I, as I go deeper, I expected the sound to decrease for it to be darker, but actually it's the inverse. I'm increasing the, the sound of glory. The sound is increasing. And actually, I thought it was getting darker for a moment, but then it's getting lighter the deeper I go. <laughs> uh. Wow. I, I'll just share because I'm getting my, getting my socks blessed, right? The socks blessed off right here. I just hear the Lord say, he says, I, uh, this is just so Papa's voice. He's, he's so confidently assured of who he is and what he's doing in his people. And he, he just told me, I have many hidden seeds in my people and I am going to harvest them. Amen. There's, there's so many seeds in you all that you don't even know what Papa has in there. And he's going to do this. All we're doing is saying, yeah. Okay, Papa. Yes. Right. Yeah. We're saying yes. We're saying yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of hidden seeds and some of those seeds, I feel like he planted in the year, 2020, 2021, 2022. And he's, um, I don't know if they're sprouts yet or, or what they are grown to, you know, but in you, Papa is very confident that what he has begun, he will finish. Mm -hmm. And he has planted seeds in you that are for his King's glory uh -huh. And he is going to cause them, Pamela, he is going to cause the seeds planted deep in you to come out yeah. simply because you said, yes, Papa. And mm -hmm. he's, and I feel like the Lord is saying to some of us, we, we, um, we try too hard. Does that ring a bell with anybody where we try to do it? We try to put it in order, try to get it all straight. And the Lord's like, I'm doing it just take a breath. I'm going to do it. We're going to, it's going to get done. Yeah. yeah amen. You know, Thank part you. of the, part of the religious spirit thing says I'm, I need to wait and contend and tarry and press in. Yeah. When God, all, all he wants to do is step into it. Step into his omnipresence, step into his omniscience step into his omnipotence step into as he is so am i in this world step into your healing it's already exists in the unseen realm you become a i am a governing co-creator that creates with yahweh i'm not waiting contending terry and pressing in i'm not waiting contending terry and to prosper i'm not waiting and <laughs> contending and tearing anything that the word says who i am and what i'm all about and Father, not only am I repenting for all my mindsets and, and the words that have come out of my mouth that were in agreement with waiting and contending and tarrying and pressing in, I, I move uh, boldly 
uh, before the throne that I am, I am in you where I live and move and have my being. Father, I'm protected in that place. I'm, I abide in that place. I'm seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, far above that demonic hierarchy. The demons have no power, no authority over me, but you have given me authority and all power over creation. Father, I thank you that I am now a governing, creative, uh, co-creator with you in relationship with you only doing what I see you do only speaking what I hear you speak and father when they see me they see you it's not for fame or fortune or title it's to to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and bring bring that blue pool of glory everywhere I go spread the glory <laughs> let it be a habitation uh, throughout uh, not only this city where I live, but this state and this nation and all creation responds to me when I show up because I am a carrier. It's who I am. I am. I am. I am the word. I am. I am a living spiritual being. I am a son of Yahweh. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Father, I step into that. Forgive us, Father, every time we stepped out of that, whether it's just in our mind or or in a religious traditional mindset or a motive of our heart or an action uh, or our deeds. Uh, Father, we thank you that from this point forward, we make a conscious effort to move into, to step into your promises that you said it is finished. We're enforcing the work of the cross, no longer waiting, contending, and tearing, and pressing in what you said is accomplished on the cross. It is finished. Father, I'd like to ask the court what verdict you would render in this class action suit. Everybody respond, if you can. You're not going to be wrong. What do you hear? What's the verdict? Don't think too long. <laughs> Fresh solutions. Fresh solutions for this year. Fresh yeah. solutions. Yeah, good one. Awesome. I heard the word peace. Repeat. Peace. I heard the word peace. Peace. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah. So as the father releases the verdicts out of the courts, you're going to catch it like a wind in your spirit and don't, don't, don't let it go past you. That is, that is what we, we just asked the most high God for the verdict. He speaks to his people. He just spoke to you. What did he say? He may say a phrase. He may say a word. He may show you a picture, but it's, Redemption. it's um, again. Redemption. 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 Good. Yeah. God. Timothy says Redemption. baptism into the cloud of glory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I heard him say free to be free, free to be free. That's awesome. Yes. That's where I like asking everybody. What do you get? Cause you're all right. Everyone is right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got you can't be wrong on this one. Yeah. I guess what I was given before was a blow the trumpet, declare the year of the Lord. Whoa. <laughs> mm. Awesome. Grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. Good one. Yeah. Oh, Father, thank you for these verdicts. Jesus, these are beautiful. They're so they're so clean and shiny and beautiful. <laughs> they are good. Thank you, guys. Leave, leaving the past behind with great rejoicing. Oh, leaving the past behind. Yeah. With great rejoicing. Yeah. Oh. What about salt covenant? Let's just seal a salt covenant. You know what a salt covenant is? Well, I read it quickly. I've heard a lot about it, but I don't remember really precisely about it. I think, isn't it a pledge of friendship at its most basic? A salt covenant is a pledge of friendship. Oh, that makes, yeah. Relationship, what I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree to be your friend. You agree to be my friend. And we have a salt covenant. Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. It, Thank you, Papa. It preserves the salt is a preservative that uh -huh. preserves our, our covenantal relationship together in divine mystical union. 
with the Trinity, with everything, with the angels, with all creation. We're all one. Look up that in some physics, uh, scientific books. Yes, quantum mm -hmm. entanglement. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes. Anybody else before we close? Timothy, you have any closing thoughts? Oh, he's he's missing in action. There he is. The, um, the we're at this place now. We're in the verdicts. It's not enough to just get a verdict in my favor, but I'm receiving grace to give it away. Grace to reproduce it and grace to um, bless someone else with it. So that's part of the class action is I'm releasing it to the body. So whatever it was that you felt like you had a deficit with and you're delivered from that and set free and healed from that, now go give it away. Uh, not just in testimony, but lay hands on somebody else, bless them, heal them, set them free. You know? And trust that you. the verdict, part of the verdict is I get an impartation of, I had a deficit, I asked God to inhabit it with his glory, and now I get an impartation of that glory, not just a remedy for my distress. So part of that, part of the faith is go give it away, give away what you just received. Awesome. And you can give it away in the spirit as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm a carrier of blue light glory. <laughs> Splashing that water on every everyone that comes near me. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're done. How are we done? Anybody else have anything they'd like to share before we go? I do. I just want to share I, I there's a waterfall it's a river of life that comes from the throne room and there's a waterfall from the throne room and i've been there i can go there all the time but and jesus is standing right at my right at, at my right side he's right there and um and i asked him i said lord can i step into the waterfall because everything that the river of life touches it heals right everything it heals and he says take a step my child so as soon as I picked my foot up to take a step, the waterfall opened up like that for me to step into it. And now you just put the pool, because I was always, what's below, you know, because I heard Jesus say, let's jump, Pamela, let's jump, you know. And there's the pool of glory, the blue pool of glory down there. So I can add that with my going up there with him. It's like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Well, you can celebrate your healing then, right? Yeah, yeah. Pamela, if you go behind that waterfall, there's a express elevator right up into the front of the face. Ah, cool. Yeah. He told me there was more. He said, I'm going to take you into more places that you've not been before. It's like, okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. What no eyes seen kind of thing so uh just uh unbuckle your seat belts how about that <laughs> yeah and so uh let's get out of here and uh well just i mean you're in faith now like never before just just believe it's already done it's just in the unseen realm you have you're a governor you're a co-creator that causes the manifestation to accelerate so uh, be one with the Father in, the, in whatever needs to manifest if it hasn't yet. Look out for tonight in dreams and visions and, and going places you've never been before and boldly doing what no man has done before. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, guys, for coming on tonight. Uh, uh, love you guys. And I want to hear some good reports you know don't be afraid to share with me on email or whatever and or uh on one of these broadcasts just love love testimonies and i love your participation more than anything that's really cool because i don't want to just sit here and talk i want to see action i want to see things happen i want to 
see things yeah. happen in your life and and uh i believe we will and so god bless you guys we'll see you uh nice. soon one day in the future Bye. yeah i love you guys have a good night bye everyone uh, good night good night, good night.